Now, the Mayavadis claim that the most important statement of the Vedas is Tat Tvam Asi, which they say means that the Supreme, which isn't uh, that, that Tvam You, Tvam, and Asi means are. This is their interpretation. But in Sanskrit, there are different ways of interpretation according to different grammatical rules. Now, on one hand, the Mayavadis say this is the greatest statement, the Mahavakya. But this is actually not uh, the proper understanding. The real Mahavakya is Om. The Vaishnavas describe that there are many statements, but if we select one particular statement like Tattvamasi or Aham Brahmasmi and say that is the conclusion, and then we neglect all the other statements that establish uh, the dual, the nature that the jiva is separate from God or has a loving relationship with God. So it's a false kind of selection while neglecting a major portion of the surrounding statements of the scripture. The proper way to analyze or understand scripture is by a thorough reading. But if we just say that this one, these three words are the whole summum bonum, and then we neglect many other statements in scripture that counter those that conception that we are proclaiming, then this is not proper interpretation of scripture. Now, even we're going to hear the Tattamasi verse, the Mayavad, has a proper uh, definition that is given by the Vaishnavas. Now, so we heard the real Mahavakya is the Bij Mantra, the Seed Mantra Om, and from that everything manifests. It's a separate manufactured idea that Tap Tvamasi is the true Mahavakya. There is no scriptural basis for that, only the Mayavadas are clinging on to that. Now we're going to hear, what is the real definition of Tap Tvamasi? We're going to get into that now, so please give us your ears. The Vaishnavas explain this according to the grammatical case of the possessive compound Sasti Tat Purush Samasa. What this means is that Tat means of the Supreme, of that, of that Supreme Absolute Truth. Not that directly, but the, the Sasti Purush Samasa means we are of that and we are therefore the servant of that. We are mayanut part and parcel of that. Therefore, our nature is to be engaged in bhakti, loving service. Because we are finite, the Lord is infinite, then our nature is to be engaged in a bhakti, loving kind of relationship. That is our dharma. Dharma means our true constitutional nature. This interpretation of the Tat Tomasi verse is in accordance and in harmony with all the other surrounding verses of the Sastra. There are countless verses that establish Hari Bhakti, pure devotion. If we take the Mayavad interpretation that we are simply that, then it negates all the verses establishing Hari Bhakti. So the proper interpretation is that one which is in harmony with the surrounding text or the text as a whole. If the, the thesis of a text is going against the grain of the entire body of the text, then that is not a proper interpretation. There are many ways to interpret something, but the most uh, proper interpretation will be that one that is uh, naturally in alignment with, in harmony, and is most logically coherent, and also the most beneficial, meaning that which is the sastra is arranged for the benefit of living entities. It's the, it's the most fulfilling for them. So when we understand Tattvamasi to mean you are of that supreme nature, you are of that supreme spirit, you are part and parcel of that, you are not this material body. That is the proper understanding. Our Gurudev teaches that first. You are not this body, you are spirit. So that is the real meaning of Tattvamasi. You are not this material body, mind, and this so-called flesh and bones and skin, that is not who you really are. You are of that divine spirit, but not that you are that divine spirit. There's a big difference. 
And if you look at it in this kind of grammatical case as we described, then that understanding becomes clear. Therefore, our dharma, our true nature, is to be engaged in a loving relationship with that Supreme Spirit. So this is the true Vaishnava way of understanding the Sutra Tattvamasi. Now, if we look at the difference between the soul and the Supreme Soul, the scriptures nowhere describe that the soul directly merges into the Supreme Soul and uh, loses all individual existence. When Swami Prabhupada was preaching in the West, someone came and said, I am that Vishnu. And Prabhupada said, then show us your universal form, like Krishna said to Gita. This is just your imagination. You are a rascal, Prabhupada said. The Supreme Soul creates billions of universes. You cannot even create an ant. What kind of God are you? You are making a mockery of this religion. As we heard in the previous class, millions of universes are expanding from the pores of the Lord. And yet you say, I am that God? What nonsense. Prabhupada said, rascal, we kick on your face with boot, Prabhupada would say. So the Mayavadis then claim, they give another statement of the Vedas. Brahmaha Masmi, or otherwise known more popularly as Aham Brahmasmi, I am that Brahma, Brahman, that supreme, absolute truth. Now, again, if we look at the Sanskrit, you can give your commentary. The Vedic statements are given in condensed forms as aphorisms, sutras. And therefore, it can be interpreted in many ways just like we heard with Tattamasi. And the rules for Sanskrit grammar are different from like English grammar, for exa example. We can put together the poetry, especially in Sanskrit poetry, uh, the order of the words can be adjusted and the grammatical cases can be uh, also adjusted. Therefore, you have to be very expert to give the proper definition of a verse. So if if we want to understand it properly, we should look at it along with the surrounding text. Now, aham brahmasmi, the word brahman is in the nominative case, known as pratamavibhakti. The Mayavadis say, how do you say it's in the sasti case? They object like that. Like we said, tattamasi is in the sasti tatpurush. Possessive compound. How do you interpret it as you are of that and not that you are that? There's a, another verse, Soyam Devadatta, that you are that, O Devadatta. So the Mayavadis say, O Devadatta, you are that. The Vaishnavas say, you are of that same nature. The the sages commonly may speak like this just to make the point very clear that uh, we are not our bodies. Therefore, our engrossment with material energy, with uh, our material affairs, is not our true uh, proper engagement or true pursuit because we are of a higher principle. So when they're saying things like that, they're saying, you are composed of spirit, not matter. Therefore, why are you engrossed in material pursuits? Instead, you should follow the spiritual path. So the Mayavadis object that we are changing the grammatical case to the genitive or sasti case. But in response, the Vaishnavas say that the scriptures explain again and again that the individual spirit soul is part and parcel of the Supreme Soul, but he is not that directly. There's a big difference. The proper way to understand is that, as we mentioned, the individual souls are tiny sparks from that great fire of the Supreme Spirit. But the individual sparks are still distinct from the Supreme Source itself. And if those sparks go far away from the fire, 
they become dull, jud, in darkness of maya, ignorance. And when we awaken our spiritual nature, then again we become illuminated. And then the Vaishnavas also say that the Mayavadis not, may not agree with our interpretation of Tattamasi and Aham Brahmasmi. They may say, oh, this is only your word jugglery. But that's not enough. This is an authentic way to interpret these verses. And it goes more in line with the corpus of the Veda and the Vedanta and the Upanishad than their false interpretation. The grammar is sound whether they like it or not. This is important to note. So when people tell you, oh, you're saying that the soul is different from God and bhakti is everything, but actually we're all God. And then they quote Tattamasi, Aham Brahmasmi, saying, look, these are our verses. Then you can refute that, no, this is your interpretation. The proper interpretation is, I am of that. According to this Sasti Tatpurush grammatical case, or this way of interpreting the Sanskrit. Now, many times we find examples in the scriptures. For example, you have poetic descriptions like the horses were flying through the air. That doesn't mean the horses were actually flying. It means the horses were going so swiftly, it appears as if they are flying. Or we hear example in Sastra, the person's face was so beautiful. It was like the full moon or like a fully blossomed flower. Their hands are so graceful. They are like slender twigs. So when there are metaphors in the scriptures, it is given to illuminate a specific characteristic. It does not mean that the person's face is really the moon or the horses are really flying or their hands are twigs, or graceful branches blowing in the breeze, it means some features are similar or common, and other features are distinct. We do not say the slender branch of a willow is the same as someone's arm. Therefore, sometimes in the Vedic literature, when they are using metaphors like Brahmaham Asmi, it's given to help us awaken into our spiritual existence, not to say that we are absolutely one with that. It's showing that we are of that same principle of consciousness. We have that same principle of spirit as the absolute spirit, not to say that we are completely one with it. We are spirit, we are not matter. We ourselves have emanated from that spiritual Brahman, this is one of the differences between Mahaprabhu's philosophy of Achintya Beda Beda Tattva and other Sampradaya's philosophies. Mahaprabhu taught that simultaneously we are one with and different from that absolute truth. And then Mahaprabhu said, we are one in the sense that we are of that same nature of consciousness, of eternal existence, and of a blissful nature, or we are seeking after Ananda, we are Amritasya Putra, we are the children of nectar, divine nectar, divine bliss or immortality, and we are of that same nature of consciousness and eternal existence. But at the same time, we are different in the sense that we are limited and God is unlimited. And Mahaprabhu then said that when there is simultaneous so called oneness and difference, the difference takes prominence. If we are completely one, we would not even be able to be aware of the concept of being one. The very fact that we have this concept of so-called oneness shows that we have difference. Otherwise, why are we talking about this even? Sugar is not philosophizing upon its nature of being sweet. As we heard before, this argument, if you are sugar yourself, you cannot taste your own sweetness. So if we were all one in truth, we would not be philosophizing that we are all one. So the very fact that the Mayavadis are all preaching we are one, we are one, shows that actually we cannot be one. We are different. So the Vaishnavas give many kinds of arguments like this. They say, if there was no difference between one living entity and another living entity, 
and the living entities in Brahman, there would be no awareness of anything. There has to be some duality to even understand distinction or potential for oneness. There's the example. Just as there are unlimited waves in the ocean, one after another, similarly, there are countless spiritual souls that exist in relation with that Supreme Spirit. We cannot say that one single wave becomes the entire ocean. That's another argument given. Just like one wave cannot become the entire ocean, the individual spirit soul cannot be the Supreme Brahman himself or herself. So we will continue with another video. Thank you for watching. We have a few more in this series. We're going to discuss more and more arguments against this Mayavad philosophy. So please share with your friends and help us grow our channel. Thank you so much for watching. Hare Krishna.